I'm going to continue my commentary on this book right here. And that's because of Luke chapter 18. You're going to find a parable in there that looks pretty straightforward. But you have to look at it a little more carefully to get the right translation. All right. Now, when you look at this, you find a parable about a judge and a widow. I don't know why this is, but this is not spoken of too much in churches today. I wish it was, but it isn't. Anyway, the parable starts out with a lesson from Luke. Not Jesus, Luke. Now, there's no problem with Luke teaching a lesson, but people, when they hear this, they get to thinking that uh, all this came from Jesus. It wasn't quite like that. All right. Now, here's the thing. Luke starts out with this lesson about praying continuously, praying fervently, that kind of thing. This kind of a lesson would have happened after the resurrection of Jesus. Remember, these disciples, once they recognized that they were st sitting and standing right next to the Son of God, they really didn't have to pray. They were just flat out talking to him. Of course, after he was resurrected, then they had to pray to him. Okay. So anyway, that, that's where all this comes down to. Now, what was the real lesson here? Well, you have to first figure out, it says that the judge in this case, would people get the idea that this judge was God himself? Well, if this judge was God, how come he didn't fear himself? And how come he didn't fear any man? Well, we know why he didn't fear any man. But how can God not fear God? interesting. Then we have the widow herself. Now the widow herself comes to this judge. She doesn't come with family members. Remember, women back in those days didn't have any rights. So for this widow to come to a judge was pretty awe-striking. Okay? So, here we've got this widow. She doesn't come with any male family members. And she petitions the judge. That was practically unheard of in first century Judea. That was the way life was back then. So, and then there's this part about having her family avenged. And then we have the judge tarrying and saying, well, I'll get back to this later. Well, eventually the judge does execute the vengeance that he needs to do. But, that is in stark contrast to what God really is. When God wants to knock somebody off, he is not going to dilly-dally. He'll take him down. Alright? And that's what you find in the next part of the parable. Is that Jesus says, hey, I'm going to take these people down speedily. Alright, so... These are the kinds of things you have to think about when you're talking about a parable like this. It's not as straightforward as you'd like to think. And in this book right here, they talk about all this, and they give a better explanation of what's going on than what I could possibly give you in this kind of a video. That's why you need to read the book. I give you an overview, and then you take it from there. Anyway, that'll give you some stuff to think about. I will tell you more in a future video. Stay tuned.